One question I keep getting asked is about this V-shaped rebound and the need to test the bottom. Now, in the fourth quarter of last year, there was a lot of talk about buy the dip being dead, sell the rip being the reality for the stock market. While it's true rallies were sold hard during that period, the longer-term uptrend that began with that first big dip after the March 2009 low is still intact. Remember, so many mavens back there said that the major indices had to retest those March 2009 lows. It never happened. Moreover, there have been other times when the market was wobbly and the experts said, buy the dip is over. Think about this. April to July 2010, May to September 2011, March to August 2015. Each time the market regained its footing and soon was trading and establishing new all-time highs. Now, this is important to consider as volatility has obviously picked up, and there's so many different forces driving the market every single day. Long-term investors, you should make adjustments, obviously, but more than likely they should be based on fundamentals, whereas those who want to be nimble, you should look at nuance. Yesterday, for instance, the market was hit with all kinds of negative news and speculation, by the way. And even though the Dow closed down 300 points, I think it was a positive session because that 50-day moving average, it held throughout the day. In fact, there was a small spike of buying into the close. Someone bought aggressively, and I bet they were smart, connected investors that understand that soon the pendulum of fear could swing back to buying dips and chasing the rip. Hey, I want to bring in Jack Avlin, co-founder of Crescent Wealth Advisors. Jack, you've been around for a while. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, and hindsight is always 2020, so we try to share it with the audience here. How do you grapple with both of these things? Where longer term, there's some names you probably love, want to hold on for a long time. But short term, some, the volatility gets to everyone. It does. And I think that's one of the things that as professional money managers, we grapple with. You know, people want stability and predictability in their lifestyle, but they're funding it with something that's inherently volatile. How do you kind of reconcile the two? And you're absolutely right. You've got to take longer term cash flow needs and pair them up with longer term assets. You've got to have shorter term uh, assets funding shorter term cash flow needs. So then that way, whenever you own a portfolio of equities, you're in a position to hold them for at least seven years. That's amazing. I'm glad you said that. In the meantime, though, a stock like a, a Netflix, for instance, up 50% in three weeks, it gets smacked down 10%. <laughs> you know, will it be around in seven years? Maybe it will be. I think the betting is sure, but they'll definitely have a lot more competition. And, and, and conversely, we saw a company like Microsoft that looked like it was flat out dead for a number of years, and then all of a sudden it was the most valuable company in America. Yeah, it's remarkable. I mean, it, it, you know, you're right. It's it's hard to predict what individual company will be around, uh, you know, for as long as long and long. I mean, you know, it wasn't long ago where, for example, you know, Sears and IBM were kind of the darlings uh, of of the market. And so, you know, you do have to pay attention. Uh, you can't just simply, you know, put your stock positions in a drawer and forget about it. Uh, but on the other hand, it does require a long-term focus. And that's why some of this near-term volatility is, a, is an opportunity to get in for the longer term. Buying the dip. <laughs> okay. It doesn't go away. By the way, isn't the oldest Wall Street axiom one of them, uh, buy low, sell high? It's a lot easier said I than done. Yeah, it absolutely is. But, you know, certainly... Uh, you know, when you've got uh, big bear markets or at least big downturns, uh, certainly much easier to be right over the long term. And the other thing is time is your friend. Uh, one of the, you know, one of the things, you know, I can't tell you what, you know, Apple stock or Netflix is going to do over the next month or so. But if you take a portfolio of, say, the S&P 100 or the NASDAQ 100 and put them together and hold them for seven years, Statistically speaking, you have virtually a 100% chance of making money. Even if you bought the day before the financial crisis, you held for seven years, you'd be in decent shape. Right now, nearer term, uh, some of these headwinds that we have, it feels like some could be resolved. I mean, we know they all can be. Uh, have you handicapped them in any way from the China trade situation to, to, to the shutdown uh, to some of the more uh, interesting questions about how fast we're slowing down? Yeah, I mean, I do think that the shutdown is having a, a de deleterious effect on the economy, probably not as much as, you know, we're going to read in the papers. But I will say, for example, we're, we want to launch a fund. It's already been approved. We need that last sign off to just get it out there for our clients. And, you know, with the government shutdown, we've now, you know, it's been put on ice since the beginning of the year. Um, that said, though, I, so I do think that, you know, 
that is probably overplayed to the downside. Um, China, however, is is real. I mean, I, I do worry that what I thought was initially a tactic okay. that's now morphed into a strategy Jeff, could I, become I'm, policy. Thank you very much.